This week, I'm hosting a fall dinner party. I'll be decorating, making a table setting, doing some DIYs, of course, and I'll be cooking a three course dinner. I have regrets. I regret, I regret everything. I'm Caitlin. And I'm Kathy. And we're the DIY sisters. So my goal for this dinner party is to spend as little money as possible. So you know what that means. A thrift store, a Dollar Tree, a, uh, homemade DIYs, it, scrounging for stuff we already own. <laughs> I will admit that at the end of this video, my most expensive purchase was groceries. I don't think anyone's surprised there. Now let's get to shopping. Oh wow, these are kind of interesting. I don't want the color, but... Oh my gosh, look at the amber one. Okay, so they have different... All the black, baby. Okay, so let's get into the haul. I found these items at my local thrift store. Look at that 25 cents, isn't that crazy? Um, the flowers in the background, by the way, are from Dollar Tree. This basket was $2, so cute. It was from the same local thrift shop. You saw the plates earlier. Um, again, I got four of those for a dollar each. I picked up three of the amber candle holders from the Dollar Tree. They only had three left, so I just grabbed all three. And then in that same uh, fabric pile, I found these white pieces of fabric and this one sort of like orange patterned one that I'm gonna turn into just like a decorative little thing. And at the Salvation Army, I found two different plaid fabrics. So that's your classic one. And then this one just sort of had this fall colors, but in a striped pattern. And then last but not least, I found these silk um, autumn leaves at the Salvation Army for 79 cents. They're super high quality and really cute. Now on to our first DIY, the table chargers. I picked up these four silver chargers from the Dollar Tree for $1.25 each. And my goal is to transform them into literal gold leaf chargers. The first thing I did was cut up the leaves or tear off the leaves. Um, don't forget these were 25 cents at the thrift store um, and I'm actually going to use the stems later. And then I'm just arranging the leaves to figure out what I want to do. I discovered that, you know, there are very few of really large leaves and then there are, you know, a little bit more of the medium. And, you know, just sort of assess your inventory and then go from there. Once I figured out a pattern, I had to get the leaves down and my thought process was to mod podge them. This did not work. These leaves are way too 3D, so just hot glue it. So that's just what you see me doing here. Um, I'm hot gluing the edges first because I want to get make sure that I have good coverage before I start laying the, um, the leaves down in a pattern that sort of like kind of moves out from the center essentially. So that's uh, starting with the sides. Just think, like everything else in life, the more you do something, the better at you get. So this first charger obviously took me the longest. Um, but you, once I was doing the fourth, I was zooming by it. I also learned that these plastic bits on the other side of the leaves were really easy to just pull off. And so what was creating sort of a difficult reason, like way to glue something down, um, got a lot easier towards the end when I realized I could just peel that part off so it would lay more flat. And then as you can see, I just went around the charger and filled in all the holes and went around in a circle and kind of had my pattern. And um, it really reminded me of Lord of the Rings. Like it looked like very like elvish like packaging. And that was kind of fun. Once they were all finished, it was time to spray paint. Just found some regular old gold spray paint and um, it kind of mixed between the champagne color and like a normal gold and then just went to town. They looked pretty cool when they were just green though, I will have to say, but that wasn't the vibe I was going for. But if I was doing sort of like a fairy springtime look, I think I would have definitely kept them green, like maybe aged them up a little bit um, with brown or something like that. But I really, I don't know, I liked the green. And there you go, gold leaf literal chargers. 
Our next DIY was all about the napkins. You saw that at the Dollar Tree, I picked up four white napkins and one orange textured fabric. So I'm starting by cutting the orange one into four strips. And so here uh, you see me hot gluing the edges because hi, I'm lazy, I don't wanna sew it. If you have a sewing machine and you wanna do that, just sew the edges. But I just wanted to hot glue it, so that's what I'm doing. So I just did that for all four strips of the orange and then all four of the white napkins as well. Now I'm going to use the white napkins to create a pumpkin. All you need is white linen and a napkin ring. You first put the napkin ring in the center and pull through. Then you're gonna take each corner and thread them through the napkin ring. Make sure it's secure at the top and the bottom. It's gonna be a little tricky, but it's definitely doable. And then lastly, you just take the other four corners, the kinds that are the parts that are sticking out, and you fold those in the same way as well. Again, just being mindful, trying to make sure everything's secure. And then lastly, you just flip it over, and you sort of make the hole a little bit wider, and you can put whatever kind of stem you want in it. I'm going to use a cinnamon stick, a half a cinnamon stick, but I currently didn't have one, so I just used the wrapper <laughs> to show you what it's gonna look like. So far this week, I have gone thrifting. I have done some DIYs and the dinner party is upon us. So today I'm just gonna experiment with the table setting. I have a couple options for the tablecloth and I'm not obsessed with either of them, but they were from the thrift store. So they were like a dollar each or less. And I wanna try to do something creative, something different, something unexpected, maybe a bit of power clashing. Spoiler alert, that doesn't go well. We'll see. I'm gonna FaceTime Caitlin and see. I'm sure she's gonna hate it. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's give it a go. Now let's clear this table off. That's better. I started by laying out the striped tablecloth on the table and quickly realized that it was way too short. So I knew I was gonna have to layer my white tablecloth underneath whatever I did. And then I quickly realized that the whole power clashing concept was not going to work. So I was gonna have to go with more of a traditional table runner look. So now I'm just playing around with the table setting. I didn't have a vision. I wasn't going off of anything online. I just kind of got some things from the thrift store and just went and played around with it. So I messed around with the composition until I figured out something that I liked. Let's find a book that we like. This is my study. The vision was really starting to come together. And I knew I wanted this basket to hold bread, so I added this beautiful linen I got in a state sale a long time ago. And then I FaceTimed Caitlin to show her all the things I had done so far. But, sad news, the audio didn't work on either of the things that I filmed with. And um, so I didn't capture any of that. But the essence of what she said was just that I needed a centerpiece. So she was like, you need greenery, you need flowers, you need something at the center to anchor the table. I think at first I was trying to not go for something so um, normal and stereotypical, but you know, she was right. So I got to work on that. But first, I got some comfort food because it wasn't recording. Yes, I had an incredibly delicious but dangerously unhealthy Cajun lunch, and then I got to work on the flowers. I tried various things, like a, a, almost any combination of everything that I had, and ultimately uh, went with this. Now before we get cooking, here's a little sneak peek of the table setting.
Okay, welcome to my kitchen. We are gonna be making three courses um, for the meal today. The first course is going to be a tomato soup um, and I'm going to serve them in these pumpkins. So first things first, we need to carve out the pumpkins because it's gonna be a tomato pumpkin soup. And you might be wondering to yourself, Cassie, what recipe are you following? Link the recipe. <laughs> there is no recipe. Because if you're like me, you hate recipes. I don't like following directions. I don't like being told what to do. <laughs> That's a joke, but it's also a problem. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I just kind of winging it. Like I've seen enough TikToks of tomato soup to know that you just like roast everything and then blend it and then let it simmer. So that's the plan and let's get started. Okay, so let's try to carve this guy. I have regrets, I regret, I regret everything. Oh, this is when I wish I had a boyfriend. Oh. Does it get easier? What's happening? So I'm gonna scoop out the seeds and if you were super cool, you would make, roast them and make pumpkin seeds. I'm not, I don't like seeds, I don't care. You know, seeds are for the birds. So, this is hard. <laughs> I'm tired of doing pumpkins, so I'm hungry. I have a date tonight and I really don't want to go. Why can't I get that piece out? <laughs> Anyone else single out there and you just complain about being single, but then when you have an opportunity to go on a first date, you're like, I would rather die. Update, the guy ghosted me hours before we were supposed to meet and I could not have been more elated. It's like I manifested it or something. Yeah, you have to just really scrape at the walls for a while until the, the stringies come out. And then I'll just kind of trim this around, try to make it more hollow. Not too hollow, but more. Do you ever uh, look back on yourself and think, wow, I was such an idiot. Look how stupid I was. That's how I feel about me 20 minutes ago. This isn't that hard, all right? Don't listen to me from 20 minutes ago. We're gonna move on to roasting the tomatoes. So we got our garlic on there. We're gonna put olive oil. I'm gonna do kind of a generous amount of olive oil. Couple sprigs and some thyme. Now All right, now we're gonna put it in the oven for an undetermined amount of time. Oh, bye-bye. Ooh. Okay, so our tomatoes have been roasted. Yes, I do have some makeup on because time has passed and we need to, you know, multitask. Oh wow, it smells so good though. <laughs> My first thoughts are that this doesn't look like a whole lot of soup. It kind of looks like one or two servings, like, <laughs> mm, I don't know. I might cut it with a bit of water and I'm definitely gonna add some cream to it. So. Yeesh. Seasoning, this onion powder pepper, put curry powder in there, a little bit of cayenne. Okay, so basically my plan now is to let that simmer as long as I can. I'm doing something tonight. So as soon as I have to leave, I'll just pop it in the fridge. Um, but, and then tomorrow I will make the entree and show all the reveals for everything. I'll see you tomorrow. Hello, oh, it is a new day. It is the day of my little gal pal dinner party. So, as you can see, we're gonna start with making, I'm tired y'all, I went out last night. I'm not gonna lie to you. Okay, so let's start with our spaghetti squash. I'm going to, of course, peel off the sticker. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is preheat the oven. So let's do 425. 
And I'm gonna cut some holes in the spaghetti squash with a fork and then put it in the microwave for a couple minutes. This is gonna get it, the skin softer so that I can just cut it in half. I'll season it, I'll show you what I'm gonna do and we're gonna put it in the oven. So let's do that. I have my spaghetti squash, it's kinda hot. So let's hope that it's soft enough that we can cut it now. Don't step. And the reason I'm doing spaghetti squash as my entree is because I feel like you should have a vegetable in your meal. And I really wanted to do this like carbonara thing. So I was like, I can't have all this bread and then have a pasta with all, you know, the whole, I mean, you can, but you know, life is about balance. So I wanted to eat the bread. So, and it's, you know, win-win, let's get a vegetable. As our spaghetti. All right, like 45 minutes. Okay, so I have to level with you. I don't really know how to make a carbonara, so I'm gonna look it up. I mean, I think it's just egg yolk and cheese, but it might be something different. So we're looking up a recipe, okay? It is sizzling. Can you see it? Yeah, sizzle, sizzle, baby. Sizzle, sizzle. So now I'm gonna cook the bacon and the mushies. So I'm just gonna get a pan. One of my friends is vegetarian and I am happy to, I told her I was gonna make hers with mushrooms and she was like, you don't have to do that at all. But I honor and respect our vegetarian brothers because I don't have the willpower to do it but I love the cause and I enjoy eating plant-based foods, but I really want bacon with my carbonara. So accommodate your vegetarian friends because they're better people than me. <laughs> it's definitely smoky in here. You can see. Oops. So after the squash was done, I just took a fork and got all the strings out of it. And then I did not film anything else after that. My girlfriends came over, it was busy. You know, I was hosting a dinner party. I couldn't film everything, but I swear it's really simple. All you do is add the ingredients into your bacon pan. So you add the spaghetti squash, the Parmesan, the egg yolk, a little bit of heavy cream on low heat, you mix it together. And then when you put it on the plate, you do a nice little twist and put Parmesan on top. It's delicious, it's easy. I swear with these ingredients, you can't mess this up. Okay, so now let's make the dessert. So I wanted to do a dessert that again, has no recipe. I like the idea of making a Moroccan pastilla. If you ever had Moroccan pastilla, it's actually an entree, right? So it's made with chicken and cinnamon and it's in this sort of puff pastry thing and then it's covered in uh, powdered sugar. But I wanted to do it for dessert. So I wanted to do the flavors I like the most and are still on like a um, you know, North African, Middle Eastern theme, which are dates. Also fig jam, which is this kind, especially. I absolutely love this brand. It's expensive, but it's worth it. Um, so the idea is just to have, I have my puff pastry and just kind of mix together the fig jam and the dates and a little cinnamon sugar, you know, wrap them up and then you know bake them and then put the powdered sugar on top. So I think it'll be delicious and hard to mess up. <laughs> I think. So let's give it a try. Sugar. 
And just like that, the three course dinner is done and ready to be served. Our first course was a tomato and pumpkin soup served in the gourd with a side of focaccia. Our second course, the spaghetti squash carbonara, one with bacon and one with mushroom. And lastly, our North African inspired dessert, a figgy date pastilla. Here's our final reveal of our autumnal table setting ready for a dinner party. Thanks for sticking around to the end. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. We've got so much more coming. See you next week. Mm. You liking it? Mm, it's so gourd. <laughs> <laughs>